Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at the question I get all the time. How to remove a background or move someone to a different background or change the background. They're really asking all the same question. And that is how to use Photoshop to extract the subject from whatever background it's on and put it on a different background. And I've shown this in other videos. However, sometimes I get feedback in my other videos that say, well, you, you, you did it easy, you cheated, you, your image was on a white background. And I respond to that in my head and say, well, yeah, duh. If I'm gonna shoot something that I kind of think maybe I'm gonna wanna recomposite this on a different background, then yes, I'm gonna shoot it on a white background to make it easier. However, I, I get what people are saying. They're saying, well, they don't have that luxury. In other words, they're not the ones taking the photographs. They're getting the photographs. Maybe they're designers. Maybe they're retouchers and they're getting things from other people that they have to then composite. And they don't always get to choose what the background's gonna be. So let me, uh, let me set some expectation here. First and foremost, Photoshop can only do what it can do based on what you give it. So in other words, if I give it a, a, a shot like I'm, I'm wearing a black shirt today on a black background and there's hardly any distinction between my shirt and the background, Photoshop's not going to do that great of a job automatically. You're going to have to do a lot of manual work because it just can't see the difference. It doesn't know the shirt versus the background, just like you could probably barely see the difference in that case. However, if it's a black shirt on any different color background, then, or even a busy background, it's probably going to do a pretty good job because it can see the difference. So garbage in, garbage out, meaning if you put in something that's very hard for it to do, then you're going to spend a lot of time doing a lot of manual touch up to make it look better. But if you, or if you give it something low res, res or low resolution, it's going to be harder for it to do. So if you're grabbing images off the web, don't do that because that's not what's going to make your life easier. So in this case, I decided to make it easier. I'm not going to use something I shot. I went out and grabbed some stock photography. I grabbed a background and I grabbed an image and the image is on something other than a white background just to show you that that really doesn't make as much of a difference as long as Photoshop can see the difference between the subject and the background. So let's take a look at what I've got here. I've got uh, two photos here. I've got the subject that I went and found on stock photography, these two kids studying here, and there it looks like they appear to be in a library with all different color books and busy background behind them. And then over here I've found a different stock photo just that I'm going to use as my room to put them in. Now, the first thing I would normally do is grab my selection tool. Since I know I'm going to composite this onto a different background, is I would just go ahead and move it onto that background. So I'm just going to pick up the move, pick it up with the move tool, drag it up to that tab, hold down, drag it down into the image, and there it is. Now, this is a common problem right off the bat. Just because you pick two images doesn't necessarily mean they're the same size. So here we have the image is bigger than the background. We can't see all of them anymore. So I need to scale this down. The way I'm going to scale it down is hold down my keyboard shortcut, Command T, and that will take me on a free transform. And if the image is so large that the handles are off screen, I'm going to give you another tip here that will always bring the handles, no matter how far they are out, back down to where you can see, and that is Command Zero. Or PC control zero. So now that brought the handles down to where I can see all four sides, or all four corners, and now I'm going to hold down my shift key to constrain them so that they do not go out of proportion. We'll grab that corner and pull it all the way down to the edge, and we'll grab this corner and pull it all the way up to the edge. And so now that they are on that background, I can hit enter or return to lock that in, and we're just going to go ahead and move them down so that they are in their new location. Okay, so, and we can even do Command-0 to bring it back up again. Now, in this case, uh, we don't have to worry about the bookcase not going all the way up because it's not going to be there anyway. This is going to be just the kids and their desk and their computer on a different background. Now, the next thing I would normally do in a case like this is I would go in and, and by the way, I have another attempt here. Let's go ahead and throw that away. There we go. I would go in and we can rename the layer while we're at it, kids. 
Okay, so we have our kids layer. I would go in and make a selection. Now, how you make your selection is up to you. Some people will painstakingly use the pen tool. Some will use the magic wand. Some will use lasso. Some will use just about masking. They'll use just about anything you can think of. I like to start with quick select for the simple reason it's quick. So we can just go ahead and just start making our selection. We want to tell it what areas we're interested in keeping. Now, sometimes quick select will grab too much. That's okay. I will fix that in a minute. We're just gonna keep going. Keep going, go up here, and there we have it. Now, it grabbed too much, so hold down my Option key or Alt key on Windows and tell it what I don't want. I want that, and then I'll just visually walk my way around the image, kind of making sure I'm getting everything I want. So we'll go down her side, laptop, table, everything on the table, uh, over to his edge, everything in between is not selected and then around him to make sure we got everything there. Okay, good to go. Now at this point, all I would have to do now is anytime you make any selection, you can finish it by removing the background just by going into the Refine Edge button. Refine Edge is that magic that will take away the existing background and put them on the new background, just like that. Why was that so easy? Because there was a distinction that quick select could find now I could be done at this point but I'm gonna cancel I'm gonna cancel and I'm even gonna deselect because there's another way to do it depending on the image I noticed something about this image when I started working on it that will make the process even easier and that is the subject is in focus and the background the bookcase is out of focus we call that in photography depth of field, meaning your foreground's in focus, your background's out of focus, blurry, fantastic, photographers live for that. We buy lenses just to do that. In this case, they're both in focus and the background's out of focus. That makes Photoshop's job even easier because now in Photoshop for CC for 2014, we've got a new selection method called focus area. So when I go up to my menu and I choose focus area under select, it will automatically start calculating and figuring out what's in focus. Now, it's going to guess wrong sometimes, and this is going to be one of those cases. So let's let it do its thing, and yep, it guessed wrong. It missed some stuff, and that's okay. I can tell it, hey, you know what? I do need that whole side of a shirt that you thought wasn't in focus enough, and I could play around with the focus range, but it did a pretty good job on most everything else. So what I'm going to do is just simply tell it, no, 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 I need that, and it will recalculate based on the area or the uh, area that I told it to refocus. And no, 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 she kind of needs her sleeve. Let's go ahead and recalculate that, and it does it. And no, 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 we need the laptop. Let's go ahead and put that back in, and it will add that back in as well. And if there were anything else missing, for example, in her hair, I could tell it, hey, you know, she kind of needs the rest of her hair as well. I can grab that as well. So there we are. It's done a good job of figuring out what was in focus and with our help, adding the things that were, that were slightly out of focus back in. And now we're ready to finish it the same way we would have finished it with Quick Select, and that's with Refine Edge. You notice there's a Refine Edge button right here in Focus Area. So when I go to Refine Edge, I have the same options here. I can choose to see it on the background that I've got it on without committing to it yet. I can tell it that, hey, I don't like the jagged edges around her hair. Let's go ahead and do a smart radius and let's go ahead and figure that out. And let's pull that back in, maybe a little bit more. And um, I could output a new layer with a mask or just a new layer, since I already have a new layer with a mask that we, start, that we got from focus area. And if there was anything I need to clean up, I can say, you know, no, you know what? I don't like that area of the red in her hair in the background. Let's go ahead and try and clean that up a little bit. I could. If not, I can clean it up after the fact. But for the most part, this is it. We have our laptop. We walk our way around the image again. Everything's there. Books are there. Table's there. Click OK. And we have a new layer generated with just the kids. And again, if I don't like that little spot right there, no problem. I can either erase it permanently or mask it using um, mask features. There we go. 
All right. That's how you would take someone from one background and put them on another. It always starts with a selection and ends with refine edge. The more distinct your subject is from the background, even if the background's not plain solid color, the easier Photoshop can do it. And now in CC for 2014 Photoshop, if your subject's in, in focus and your background's out of focus, you have another way to do it. So with that said, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.